Washington. And I know a lot of Republicans are against it because Donald Trump is against it. But here's here's the problem for you guys. Uh, the Border Patrol Union came out and the acting CBP chief both came out and said they're not it's not perfect. But this is the best thing we've seen in decades. So are Republicans going to say that the Border Patrol Union and the acting CBP chief are wrong? Well, look, they can have their perspective, Steve, uh, and we've it's got a lot their of respect. Jobs, Tom. We've well, and it's our job to uh, actually make sure the laws will accomplish what we're seeking to do. That was Fox News host Steve Ducey calling out the dishonesty of Republicans' current decision to kill a deal on the border that is endorsed by Border Patrol, contains a bunch of Republicans' wish list items. This would be the deal of the century for Republicans. But as we've been covering extensively, they are against it because they care more about exacerbating problems at the border so that they can then blame Joe Biden for them. It's a pretty sick political game and uh, reflects so much of what's wrong with the modern Republican Party, but it's the situation we're in. And in this segment, I want to walk you through a few different interesting elements of this subject, including some Republicans calling out their own party to their credit for the game that is being played. That's how dishonest this stunt is. Even Fox hosts and other Republicans seem fed up with this. So we saw there, like I said, Fox host Steve Ducey calling out Tom Emmer. Here is Republican Congressman Chip Roy. No, we're not going to just pass the buck and say that, oh, any president could walk in and secure the border. I saw former President Trump make that allegation earlier today on one of his social media posts. All a president has to do is declare the border is closed and it's closed. Well, with all due respect, that didn't happen in 2017, 18, 19, and 20. There were millions of people who came into the United States during those four years. Can you imagine? Things are getting so crazy that Republican congressmen are calling out Trump on this. My goodness. Now, say what you will about Chip Roy, and there is plenty to be said, don't get me wrong, but I think he actually holds some stances on things and, you know, wants to see things happen here and there, which is why we see these sorts of outbursts against his own party from him. Someone like Marjorie Greene, for example, doesn't actually care about any of the things she says she's fighting for, like we've seen on the border. The second Trump said oppose addressing the problems that they've been screaming about for some time now, she is perfectly fine with opposing this deal. And I think Chip Roy actually wants something to happen, and thus the stunt by the GOP is going too far for him, and that appears to apply to Dan Crenshaw as well. Here's this. Um, I, I understand some Republicans are saying, we don't need any changes to law. Then why did we write, H write HR2? Why did, we, why did we do that? Why didn't Trump just shut down the border if you just think we don't need any changes to law? He couldn't. He had to make a deal with Mexico, and he did a great job doing that. Um, but he had to rely on literally international agreements to get it under control. We do need changes to law. You got to change those loopholes in asylum. You got to raise the bar for asylum. You've got to make it very clear that there's no paroling. Um, you need to institute remain in Mexico as an authority in law. They're, they're, you know, these are really simple fixes that need to be done. Um, and, you know, that emergency authority that everybody interpreted, I think, as entries. You need to clean that up. OK, so I will remind everyone, of course, there has been a big surge at the southern border post a pandemic. But the big drop is often referred to in border crossings in 2020 was pretty obviously because of the migration movement freeze caused by the pandemic and then there was a huge spike in december of 2020 as that started to change so i think it's more accurate to assess the pre-pandemic years when looking at trump's presidency and there were more border crossings in 2019 than any year under obama but republicans don't say that means obama was great and trump was horrible on the border no or that trump opened the border or stopped enforcing laws it's way more complex than that the reasons that migration happens uh that is and so using that metric since they care the most about it and using the fact that the entire time trump was president he was fear-mongering about caravans of migrants and all these different things being out of control and that's why we needed him to stay president to fix it by their standards proves there were changes in law that were needed which is what crenshaw is articulating and others now, people across the political spectrum are going to disagree, obviously, about what those changes in law should look like, what extra funding and personnel should go where, and how the asylum process should be addressed, and all of it. But at least Democrats are willing to have that discussion and negotiation, as we've seen, and come out with a deal and try to come to a solution. And some Republicans, to give them 
credit are as well interested in that, but not MAGA Republicans. They love the problem and fear mongering about it way more than a potential solution. Then uh, here's Joe Biden calling out Trump over killing the deal. For much too long, as you all know, the immigration system has been broken. And it's long past time to fix it. That's why months ago I instructed my team to begin negotiations with a bipartisan group of senators to seriously and finally fix our immigration system. For months now, that's what they've done. Working around the clock, through the holidays, over the weekends, it's been an extraordinary effort by Senators Lankford, Murphy, and Sinema. The result of all this hard work is a bipartisan agreement that represents the most fair, humane reforms in our immigration system in a long time, and the toughest set of reforms to secure the border ever. Now, all indications are this bill won't even move forward to the Senate floor. Why? A simple reason. Donald Trump. So for the last 24 hours, he's done nothing, I'm told, but reach out to Republicans in the House and the Senate and threaten them and try to intimidate them to vote against this proposal. And it looks like they're caving. Frankly, they owe it to the American people to show some spine and do what they know to be right. Yeah, they do owe it to the American people to show some spine, but you can be damn sure they're not going to show any spine and they will cave to Trump as they always do. By the way, while they're obstructing this deal, I know I've said this time and time again, they're saying the problems at the border justify impeaching Alejandro Mayorkas. And as we cover that vote barely failed, which was good to see. But shortly before it did, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz mocked the potential action by Republicans, as was indicated, to select Marjorie Green to be an impeachment manager for Mayorkas' uh, trial in the Senate. So we could have seen a Marjorie impeachment manager for this Mayorkas trial if he had been impeached. Really happy that that didn't end up taking place. That would have been a disaster. And here was Moskowitz responding to that prospect. But Republicans have the brilliant idea to make Marjorie Taylor Greene one of the impeachment managers. Yeah, we, listen, America is demanding more of Marjorie Taylor Greene. I hear it all the time. She's fabulous. Okay, just totally wonderful, charming, right? Just a real people person. Feel like you can connect with her on a real human level, right? Very level-headed, doesn't seem angry or bitter, sticks to the facts uh, and the truth. Uh, the darling, quite frankly, of the middle of the country. Uh, and so Republicans were like, let's feature her uh, on national television. In fact, let's put her in the Senate uh, and let her make the case on why we should impeach a secretary, which hasn't happened in 150 years. I think it's an excellent choice, really, by, by Speaker Johnson showing that he, he really is committed uh, to continuing to destroy uh, the 118th Congress. You know, it really does seem like Republican leadership and the Republican Party as a whole, they're just leaning into, let's destroy this Congress, trying to make sure everyone remembers that it was the most inefficient, the most ridiculous, and the most MAGA that we've had, which won't be a good legacy. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and you can become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership.